that's the papers they hand out. And I've been, been pondering this a lot the last few weeks. And I want to talk a little bit about it tonight, so i got some friends to help me, okay? And so tonight I'm going to talk to you a little bit about feeling or filling. Feeling or filling, okay? Now, here's my friends. <laughs> some of you are laughing and giggling because you know what it is, and some of you have no clue what that is. How many of you know what that is? It's a great movie. It's a great movie. Okay, how many of you don't know what this is? This is your homework. Go watch it. <laughs> this is a great cartoon called Inside Out. Okay, and it is a great movie. It's about a little girl named Riley. Riley was a hockey player, and she loved her life, and she loved where she lived. And all of a sudden, Daddy got a promotion, and Daddy got moved to another city, a big city. And all of a sudden, this little girl is going through all of these emotions on the inside. And how many know what's on the inside is typically going to end up coming out on the outside? All right, and this is the control center of her brain. Okay, throughout the movie. Now, let me introduce you to the to them. Okay, first of all, we have Joy, right? Now, let me tell you who Joy is. Joy is, oops, okay, just give you a quick thing. She's the one who always has been to make sure that Riley stays happy. She's lighthearted, optimistic, and determined to find the fun in every situation. Okay, she's seen the challenges in Riley's life as opportunities and the less happy moments as hiccups on the way to something great. All right, then we have disgust, right? <laughs> disgust. She is the highly opinionated, extremely honest, and prevents Riley from getting poisoned, both physically and socially. She keeps a careful eye on the people, places, and things that Riley comes into contact with, whether that's broccoli or last year's fashion trend. All right, and then we have this one, sadness. I mean, that is the epitome of sadness, all right? None of the other emotions really understand what her role is. Sadness would love to be more optimistic and helpful, but she finds it so hard to be positive. I mean, there's some people like that, never mind. Okay, and then we have fear, all right? I mean, you know this guy, okay? Fear, his main job is to protect Riley and keep her safe. He is constantly on the lookout for the potential disasters and spends time evaluating the possible dangers, pitfalls, and risks involved in Riley's everyday activities. There are very few activities and events that fear does not find to be dangerous and possibly fatal. And last but not least, this dude, anger. All right, <laughs> he, he's a riot actually in the movie. He feels very passionately about making sure things are fair for Riley. He has a fiery spirit and he tends to explode when things don't go as planned. He's quick to overreact and he has little patience for life's imperfections. So that's a little bit of our cast and I bring that up because how many know every one of us at times in our life have dealt with every one of these emotions, right? And, and every one of us. Right, and, and it's kind of funny. I remember watching this years ago and thinking, man, that's my grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> no, come on, I mean, I mean, I mean one of the things, okay, there's that emotion, there's that emotion. All right, this is, this is, I, I just learned something from this movie. All right, if I don't, if you didn't get one, there'll be enough, but you know, I don't have them split up equally. So, all right, what I want to talk about is this, in our life, when we find ourselves Than they are to be a guy. Because how many know our emotions 
should drive us to the Lord. As a gauge. Okay? The, the song that says, when I'm afraid, I call on you. Right? When that emotion arises, when you're sad, you call on God. When you're angry, the emotion should drive you as a gauge to the one who can help you overcome the emotion. Feelings, now here's the deal. Feelings and emotions are not wrong. But they should not govern our life. All right? It, they cannot govern your, your life. They cannot govern your actions. Okay? They're not wrong, but they should not be the thing that governs your life. How many know somebody that's constantly angry? They're just angry all the time. All the time. How many know others who are sad all the time? I mean, you could give a million bucks and all they would talk about is having to pay taxes on it. Jeez, okay. okay. All right. Many people allow their feelings to govern their actions. Okay? Their feelings get hurt. What do they do? They react. You hurt my feelings. Now I'm mad. I'm gonna retreat. I'm gonna retaliate. I'm not gonna talk to you. Okay? And 30 years later, you're at the family reunion, and Aunt so-and-so still ain't teaching talking to Aunt so-and-so. They're too old to remember what they're arguing about, but they're still not talking. Anybody ever been to those family reunions? Oh, yeah, you need to have an Italian family. All right? Here's the thing. When you are governed by your feelings, you're constantly up and down. You're at the whim of everybody around you, too. You're at the whim of everything. You're up, you're down, you're in, you're out. You're up today, you're down tomorrow. You're, you're up in the morning, you're down at night. How I many you know what I'm talking about? Never mind. Okay? When you are governed by your feelings, you're at unrest. Because you don't, you, there's no peace. It's like you're in this constant whirlwind of emotional feeling. Okay? Listen to this, I like this one. When you are governed by your feelings, you will often be in conflict with people. Why? Because they're always doing something that makes you feel something. Well, you made me angry, Becker. So I'm now arguing with you, right? And you took his side, so now I'm mad at you too. Well, I'm going to get around. I'm going to hold on to it for the next 30 years. Okay? And I'm not talking to you about it. And I'm not coming to your thing, and I'm not coming to that thing. I'm mad. I'm going to prove my point. Come on, I mean, know what I'm talking about, yeah, yeah. right? You find yourself in conflict with people all the time about something, right? When you are governed by your feelings, you are not a calm in the storm. Come on. Some, somebody got to be the calm in the storm sometimes. I, I may ever, uh, you know, I, I used to say to my kids when we were growing up, and I still say to Tony, I says, we don't panic, relax. We don't panic. We, we ain't going to, we, we don't panic. Okay, and, and yet, how many know people that are in a storm, but they're anything but a calm in the storm, because their feelings are running rampant. Their feelings are running wild, and and, and everything is just right. When you're governed by your feelings, you're generally not too good at the crisis. You don't want crisis. You don't want feeling people in a crisis. People who are are always feeling, and they have these deep feelings, and they and they and, and everything is just. Ugh. You don't want to, they're not too good at crisis usually, okay? The crisis usually has the feelings going all over the place, going haywire. But here's the deal. Your family needs you to not be governed by your feelings. Your family needs you to not, mom, mom dad, grandparent, whatever. Your family needs you to not be driven by feelings, okay? You, you, you can't be a, an emotional roller coaster. You can't be an emotional basket case. You can't be an emotional train wreck. Your family needs you to be a calm in the storm sometimes. They need you to be an anchor in the storm, and you can't be that if your emotions are jacked up and all over the place all the time, okay? Your friends need you to not be governed by your feelings. I mean, you know there's friends that need to help them through a storm or a crisis, and you're all jacked up, okay? God needs you to not be governed by your feelings. Why? So you can minister to others. Remember what he says? We have, that we would comfort others with the comfort we receive. We talked about that on Sunday. But if your feelings are all jacked up and you can never find any comfort, receive comfort, you can never receive any peace from the Lord, you can't give it to anybody. All you can do is transfer your chaos. Pastor, what? <laughs> okay? What causes feelings? Life situations. Death causes feelings, right? Sadness. Anger. Hmm? Despondency. 
They get caught in it. Situations such as sickness. Why did my Why did my mother get cancer? Why did my mother get Parkinson's? Why did my mother this? Why did my brother that? I mean, you know, we can, we go through all these range of emotions when we have loved ones who get some sort of sickness. Whoops! I got ahead of myself. Hit that button. Back up. Times of trouble, trial, tribulation. Going through you going through stuff. Life. We go through stuff. In this world, you will have trouble, but rejoice, I've overcome the world. That doesn't say we won't go through stuff. We can go through financial stuff. We can go through relationship stuff. Our own relationships. We can watch our kids go through relationship stuff. I mean, that's things worse than going through your own. Okay? You can, you can watch all this stuff, and it brings turmoil, and it brings heartache, and it brings all these feelings that you go through. Okay? So, uh, in our life, there's a lot of people who live with unmet needs and wants that become the cause of feelings. And when they're not met, they become the driving force of discontent in their life. I, I thought this was going to happen. I thought that was going to happen. I wanted this, and I wanted that. And this isn't what I wanted for my life. And this isn't what I wanted for my kid's life. And, and all of a sudden, all of these things, when they go unmet, they become the driving force of discontent and with constant feelings. And making sense so far? And what happens is the unfulfilled want becomes fuel for our feelings. And the spirit of discontent fuels our actions. Right? So, here's the question. How do I feel yet not be governed by my feelings? Because you can't help but feel that we're emotional beings. God's made us emotional for a reason, but he never made us to be governed by our emotion. Okay, we're not being, because how many know being governed by your emotions is part of being driven by your flesh? The emotions are part of the flesh. The emotions are part of the human part of us. We're to be led by what? The spirit, okay? And so, so how do I, how do you, how do we go through stuff, have the feelings, and yet not be governed by the feelings? And this is really important. Well, I'm going to take a little bit of excerpts out of a message I did four years ago and bring some of this into here to try to, to dovetail it together. So let's go. All right. Second Corinthians chapter 12, Paul says, because of the extraordinary greatness of the revelations, because I mean, Paul had these incredible revelations from God. For this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might leave me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. So get this. Paul three times goes to the Lord and says, I want this thing removed from me. And God says, no. <laughs> I can, how many of you like, would be like, excuse me? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Lord, I'm asking you to take it with me. No. But Lord, I really want you to take it with me. No. Okay? Isn't it wild? I mean, you're reading an unanswered prayer. But God answers all my prayers. No, you don't. Yes, he does. Just not the way you want. How many know when you're asking God for something, he says no, no is as good as yes. We like yes. God, can I this? No. I wanted it to be yes. So, it's no. Three times, God said no. Then he says this. He said, but, he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Let's look at this. So Paul, a couple things. First of all, his grace is sufficient to carry you through anything you face. Anything you face in life, his grace is able to carry you through. You can face death through his grace. You can face temptation through his grace. It's an enabling thing in our life. It's an equipping thing. It's an empowering thing. You can face anything like, you can face sickness. You can face a uh, trial. You can face tribulation. Anything, you can face it because his grace is there. All right? When you are operating off of your feelings, you are not allowing God's grace to carry you. Well, I got this, God. I can handle this in my anger. I can handle this in my sadness. I can handle this in my whatever, okay? That my feelings are more able to take me through this than your grace. All right? How many of you ever try to find somebody when they're sad and you try to cheer them up and they're just like, no, I got this. I'm sad. I'm going to say sad. <laughs> I refuse to be cheered up. Yeah, but let me tell you what the Bible says. Don't care what the Bible says. I want to be sad. Leave me alone. Okay. <laughs> All right? But the glass is three quarters full. No, it's not. It's still a quarter empty. 
Right? Right? Listen to me. When you when you when you get your feelings governing things, you're saying to God, you're not allowing His grace to be that that empowering force in your life. When God wants to bring me through every situation by His grace, but my feelings limit the power of His grace when I'm governed by them. Okay? What's that? The joy of the Lord is your strength. I don't care. I want to be sad. <laughs> I'm going to be sad again. I'm not saying you're not sad for a moment. Losing a loved one is, brings a moment of sadness, right? But you cannot be governed the rest of your life by that sadness. You just can't. How do you get over that? Well, hopefully we'll show you something, all right? Feelings of weakness can be overcome by the power of God through grace. So for my power is perfected in your weakness. How many know today that when you are weak, he is strong, the Bible says? And you come to a place where you know, hey, wait a minute. It's not me getting me through this. This is God getting me through this. Now, so come, so get this. So let's get back here, man. Back up. Beep, beep, beep. You know why I can back up to your rose? Because I want to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back and look at this verse. Because of the extraordinary greatness of revelations, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a message of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. And I pleaded with the Lord three times that they would leave me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Paul says, most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Now, bump forward, because I can't hear us. Now, look at, so then we skip all these things I said. Now, look at the next verse. Come on, back up. Therefore, because of all those other things he just said, therefore, I am what? Well content with weakness, with insults. <laughs> How many like being insulted? <laughs> okay. Distresses, persecutions, with difficulties, for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So Paul, take those three verses that we just read, and now he says, okay, if that's the case, and his power is perfected in weakness, and his grace is sufficient for me, therefore, I'm well content in all things. Right? Paul says, because of the grace of God that strengthens him, he's well content. It's worse word being saying, to think good, to choose, to determine, to decide to do willingly, to be ready to, to prefer, to choose, to be well pleased with, to take pleasure. Do you know what this is saying? Paul's saying, I choose to do it, I don't feel like doing it. There are some things you do because you're choosing to do it, not because you feel. How many of you, some of you will say, yes, I was ready. But how many of you didn't really feel like getting out of bed this morning? Anybody? What did you do? You got out of bed. How many of you didn't maybe feel like going to work today? <laughs> Troy. And what did you do? You chose to go to work. Right? You weren't governed by your emotions. You weren't governed by your feeling. How many of you didn't want to come to church tonight? <laughs> it was cold. It was cold. <laughs> it was too cold. I'm not uh, oh, that's not good on the MS, is it? Yeah. No. See, but you chose to come. Well, we chose to come. <laughs> okay. Everybody needs a partner. Right? If you go to the Inside Out movie, there's the friends. How many remember there are the friends who are along the help? Then you help them. Oh, that's pretty close. Okay. All right? But understand, there are times in your life where you know what it means to make a choice over a feeling. Right? But sometimes we don't do it in those things that are, I don't want to say less important, but, well, I got to get out of bed to work because I got to get paid. I, I got to get out of good bed, okay? But I, this other thing that's going on, I, I feel like I'm, I'm going to be angry because they hurt my feelings and I'm ticked off with them. And, 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 and you know, so I'm just going to live by that. No, 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 no. Paul says, I choose. I choose. You know, you, know you, can, you, you can choose to not be offended. You don't have to be offended. <laughs> you can choose not to be offended. Because, the, uh, first of all, the reason you're offended is because of your pride. A lot of times. A lot of it's a pride issue. You're offended because your pride was hurt. Okay? You're offended because somebody hurt your feelings or hurt little Johnny's feelings. Okay? But you can choose not to be offended. 
All right? Okay? And, and, I'm not, and I'm not saying that the offense wasn't an offense. I can say you can choose to not be offended. All right? It's a choice that you make. You can choose not to do that. All right? So this is what this means. He's making a choice. So Paul says that he's choosing to be well content. I'm going to be content in all things. Right? Paul doesn't say he feels content. He's saying, I choose to be content. I don't feel like it, but I'll choose it. Becker, do you feel like dying? I'm not sure it's Okay, let me get somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I, can, I have, can I have somebody who will say they're miserable dying? <laughs> You're not. Okay, it's Amy. We had lunch together today. You, me, Brent, and Yang. And, and you were going to eat and go work out. Yeah. Which did you feel like doing? Oh, eating. I wanted to eat. I wanted to eat, not work out. That's right. Okay? And, and so we find ourselves, but you had to choose to go work out. I did. Right? So, so um, all right. Feelings are real, but decisions set the course. All right, you, you're going to feel sad through some situations, and you're going to have a moment of anger. You're going to have a moment where those emotions rise up. But at some point, you have to say, no, 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 no. I'm going to set a course based upon not my feelings, but rather I'm going to go back to the truth of God's word. I'm going to do some things to get my spirit in check. But I'm not going to allow my feelings to dictate the course. Because when your feelings dictate the course, you will end up usually in a fight, you will end up angry. You will end up sad. You will end up a lot of things when you allow those feelings to set the course. All right? Paul does not operate off of the weakness or strength of his feelings. Okay? Paul is able to be content. Now, here's, here's this message I did four years ago. It, it talked about his contents or mine, my contents or his, or something like that. Okay? Paul is able to be content because of the contents of Jesus. Okay? Now, this is, this is, okay. Check it out. He says, so first of all, God says this, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace, Paul, is your grace. I mean, no, his grace becomes your grace. His content becomes your content. All right? My grace is your strength, Paul. His content is grace. Therefore, grace becomes the content of Paul. How I many know what he is, you become? What he is, his spirit lives in you. Therefore, what he is, you are because of his spirit. So if his grace is sufficient, how many know his grace becomes my grace, which becomes power? His grace becomes my grace, becomes the content of Paul. What is in Christ should be in us. His content is grace that becomes the content of Paul that leads Paul to being content. Say that ten times fast. Right? Okay? Paul was content because of the contents of his life that belonged to Jesus that now became his. Okay? Because your feelings are typically jacked up by what happens on the outside of you. Right? Somebody dies. Somebody gets sick. Somebody hates you. Somebody likes you. We can go on and on. The things on the, on the outside, they hit us and they produce the feelings on the inside. Alright? But now we need something else on the inside to take over and govern the feelings. Okay? Lord says, my power is your power. Okay? His content becomes my content. Yep. His content, okay? So, his content becomes my content. His content makes me content. Okay? Got to keep this, right? Now, all of a sudden, it's the peace of God in me that makes me content in a situation that I really don't like. Or a situation where I'm feeling a certain way. Paul said, I'm shipwrecked. I said, okay, I'm content. I'm going hungry. I'm content. They beat me three different times, 39 strikes. I'm content. Okay? I don't know about you, but I got some feelings about that. Okay? 
Do you know why? You know you, how, how many of you don't raise your hand because you know I wouldn't want to incriminate anybody. But you ever got in an argument with your spouse because your feelings were hurt? Uh, <laughs> And then the feelings got worse because then you said something and then you allowed yourself to be dominated by anger and resentment. Then it caused sadness. N never happens in marriage. Right? <laughs> right? His content is power, therefore the contents of Paul is power. His content is power, therefore my content is power, therefore I am content. <laughs> I am content because his content becomes my content. Therefore, I am content. Now, here's a couple of statements, then we're going to get into another scripture. No matter the contents of my life, his contents can be my contents. My life might have some sadness, but I still have his joy. My life might have some unrest, I still have his peace. My life might have some challenges, I still have his grace. Okay? I might have rejection that causes a feeling. How many know I still have his love? Like on and on we can go and talk about this. That my life might have some things that stink, but I still have his contents. No matter the contents of my life, his contents become my content, and then I am uh -huh. how many know at least the contentment? The contents. Okay. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Um, as his content becomes my content, I, overcome, I already talked about that. Okay, this is what I'm going to get to. So now, how does this happen? Well, look at this. Look at this scripture. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and pleading and with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Okay? And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your mind. All right, so first of all, Paul says, do not be anxious about what? Anything. 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 Do not be anxious about anything. Now we all know what it is to be anxious. We know what it is to have anxious moments, right? But do not be dominated by it. Do not be governed by it, okay? I think it's interesting, Paul, I think it's interesting when you back up and look at this. Paul says, don't be anxious about anything, but by everything, by prayer, pleading, and thanksgiving, <coughs> let your request be known to God, and Peace of God will surpass all come God your heart and mind strength. Think about this. I wonder if he learned this when he prayed three times for God to take it away and God said no all three times. Just a thought. Hmm. He says, he didn't say, but notice what he didn't say. And everything by prayer, pleading, thanksgiving, let your request be made to God and he will make it all better and take it away from you. No, he didn't say that. He said, and the peace of God will surpass all comprehension will guard your heart and mind. It doesn't say, okay, come on. Sometimes we pray prayers, listen to me, and then he doesn't answer. Or he doesn't answer the way we want. Right? I mean, that will give you some feelings about God. Okay? So he says, don't be anxious about anything, but rather, by prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, pray. Here's what he's saying. Do you know that when you're in those moments of anxiousness and your feelings are trying to guard you and they're trying to um, do dominate you and govern you and they're trying to govern your life and dictate your reaction and dictate your choices and dictate your relationships? Because how many know a lot of relationships have been sabotaged by feelings? Okay? Paul says when you get to these moments of anxiousness and your feelings are running amok, pray, petition, and thanksgiving, it'll guard the contents of your heart. It, that will guard the content of your heart. It, is, it will guard the contents of my feelings. Okay? Watch this. Because here's what prayer, and that word, that word, um, heart, here's some of the wings it means. Prayer, petition, and thanksgiving guard the contents of my passions, my desires, my appetites, my affections, and my emotions. Isn't it amazing that when you can go into prayer and legitimately praying about that very thing that you might be anxious over, that you might be emotional over, whatever you might be, that all of a sudden in those moments of prayer, that these passions and desires and appetites and affections that are trying to run your life, all of a sudden they can't run it. There's something happens in that, that moment of prayer. 
I, I, listen, I, I believe with all of my heart, one of the things that we see is we see Jesus doing this in the garden before going to the cross. Because how many know he was having some feelings? Remember, he was fully God, fully man. He was fully human. And he was having some feelings. i got to go to the cross. I'm going to be tortured. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. I don't want to do this. I don't feel like doing this. This is going to be terrible. This is going to be painful. I don't want, I don't want to do this. Is there another way, Lord? No. There's not another way. Okay. How I many know? Because, because what? He came out of there obedient. He came out obedient. He wasn't driven by the feelings. He came out obedient. All right? Without prayer, my heart is left unguarded because the peace of God is absent. All of a sudden, I'm anxious. But I'm going to do everything to pray. I'm going to call everybody up I know and tell them all how anxious I am and tell them every way my feelings have been hurt, every way my feelings have been jacked up. So-and-so said this and so-and-so said that and so-and-so did this and so-and-so did that. Oh, by the way, my boss this and my boss that and da-da-da. And all of a sudden, you've called everybody in Altura and you still ain't got no peace. Why? Because Job's comforters are on one eye, telling you all the things you did wrong. And over here are all the ones you want to tell you that you're doing everything right and make you feel better, even though you're still jacked up. Right? And you're still left in this. Okay? Because what happened is, Paul said that when we pray, the peace of God guards our heart. But without prayer, my heart is left unguarded, 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 and unguarded, okay? And now the peace of God is absent. Because I want to do anything but pray. I want to sleep. I want to scream. I want to yell. I want somebody to pat me on the back, give me a big hug, and tell me to be okay. Yeah, that's good. Prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, Paul said, guards the contents of my mind. So at first it guards my feelings, my affections, my desires, my emotions, and all this stuff, my, my gooey part of me, okay? And then it says it guard, guards the contents of my mind. Prayer, petition, thanksgiving guard the contents of thoughts, perceptions, and purposes. Because you all know that when your feelings are jacked up, so is your thinking. As a man thinks, so he is. That, you, that all of a sudden now, because you know, how many know sometimes that you are going through something and your feelings are jacked up, but all of a sudden you're thinking, well, Steve, Steve walked right by me and he didn't even say hello. What's he mad at me too for? <laughs> no, he, must, he must be mad at me. And he must be. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Oh, so and so talked to you, didn't they? Brent, yeah, Brent. <laughs> right? oh, oh, you must, you must be on their side. Uh, now we got people choosing sides. Are you on my side? I'm done. Uh, pastor for 25 years, you'll see it. <laughs> right? Have kids, you'll see it. Right? Think about it. But that's what we do. All of a sudden, in our thoughts and our mind starts playing tricks on us. It's so and so mad at me. And they rejected me, and da 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 And now I'm just a mess, right? But Paul says, prayer, petition, thanksgiving guards the contents of thoughts, perceptions, and purposes of my mind. Without prayer, my mind is left unguarded because of the absence of his peace. Okay? See, it's the content of my prayer protects the content of my mind. Therefore, it changes the content of my heart, mind, and spirit. All right? My, my heart and my mind and my spirit can be changed when I go into that prayer. Okay? And he says that the peace of God then protects that. All right? Now, watch what it says. That scripture says, And the peace of God that passes all understanding or all comprehending. Peace is not dependent on you comprehending. It surpasses your understanding. You can have peace in a situation even when you don't understand the situation. How many of you have situations that you'd like to have some understanding for? Why did this have to happen, Lord? Why did this happen, Lord? Why did that happen? 
Why did that person get sick? Why did that person die? Why did that person reject me? Why did that person this? And you can go on and on. And on. Why did this have to happen, Lord? Why did my house have to burn down? Why did my dog have to die? Well, that has to happen too. Oh, no. But here's what no, Paul's saying. But listen, he says the peace that passes understanding, passes your ability to understand, that you don't need to understand, that you can have a peace that just says, I'm, I'm in a tranquil state, that I'm not being tossed to and fro, because I pray, and his peace has now guarded my heart and my mind. Okay? See, here's the deal. We are people of feelings and emotions, yet we are not meant to be a people governed by feelings and emotions. If we're to be governed by our feelings and our emotions, then why God put his spirit in us? To govern our, and they put it in there to govern our feelings and our emotions. <laughs> let's be honest. Because, uh, okay, let's think about some of the things that the spirit of God leads us away from. How many of there are times you feel like lying? Right? Sometimes you feel like cussing and you give to end up Christian cussing. Right? That, there, that, that much of the things that the Spirit of God does is lead us away from our feelings and our emotions, of being governed by our flesh, governed by our appetites, governed by our desires. Okay? Because we cannot be stable people being governed by our emotions. It's impossible. Because there's always going to be things that are going to jack up your emotions. Right? Listen, some of us can't watch the political news without it jacking up our emotions. <laughs> right? I told you the story before. I told a guy one time years ago, I said, dude, you need to fast the news. And I'm dead serious. Stop watching the news for a season. And he did. He was much more joyful. <laughs> Every time he was watching this, that's dirty, right? Well, there you go. Just feed yourself some more venom. You know, you wonder why you're ching, 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 right? We can't be. We, we are going to have feelings, moments of sadness, moments of anger, moments of all those things are going to come. But at some point, you have to be willing to surrender those feelings to the Spirit of God. That you pray and you say, "Wait a minute. Let me allow the Spirit to govern my flesh, and not my flesh to govern me." Because if you don't. Good luck to you. Good luck to your family. Because you're going to have them on a yo-yo string with you. <laughs> Nobody wants to ride a yo-yo. Roller coaster is more fun than a yo-yo. Right? If anything, if anything, feelings and emotions should drive us to God. Who then gives his contents to become our contents so that we can be content in all things. Okay? So... It's not saying deny your feelings. Feelings should drive you to God. When I'm afraid, boom. When my soul is downcast, boom. My soul, my soul must sing. Okay? And, okay, I would have despaired had I not believed I'd see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. There's a place where you've got to come and say, these are my feelings and they are real. But I will not be dominated by them. I will not be governed by them. And I will not make actions and reactions off of them. I will operate off of the Spirit of God. I will operate off of the peace of God that transcends all understanding. I will fill my heart and soul with the Word of God so that His contents become my contents. His grace is my grace. His peace is my peace. His power is my power. And now, guess what? I'm not being governed by this fickle flesh, this fickle feelings. It's incredibly important that we get control of these emotions and these feelings. Carnal Christians are driven by the flesh, but not just the flesh of sin, the flesh of feeling, the flesh of emotion, the roller coaster of affections and appetites, and, and, and uh, I'm angry today, I'm not angry today, I'm angry at you, and you know what I'm talking about, how many know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right? That there's just this whole emotional roller coaster. And, and sometimes it's your coaster, and sometimes you're stuck on somebody else's coaster. Right? It's like, oh, Lord, let me off, please. I didn't buy a ticket for the third trip. I got on the first time, but you ain't ever stopped the coaster. 
Like I've heard about this for 16 days in a row. Let me off. Please. I need a come on. I mean, uh, you, 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 you see him coming. He said, no, no, I ain't riding that sucker today. <laughs> no, I am not riding that coach today. I'm going over and I'm going to ride the merry-go-round. I'm going to ride the boats. <laughs> I ain't getting on that coaster. You had me up, you had me up, down, in, out for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. A month. I ain't doing it no more. Man, you get stuck on somebody's coaster. It sucks. Oops. Christian cussing. Okay. Any cussing? No. How, how many? How many of you? So how many of you would like to get off somebody's coaster? <laughs> how many of you would like to give up your own coaster? <laughs> you like roller coasters? I'll bet you don't like hers. <laughs> uh, I bet you I bet, I bet you'd much rather go to Wish Gardens. <laughs> That ticket. <laughs> they're, non -trans hey, they're non transferable. <laughs> All right. But it, it, listen to me. There are people around you that need you to stop the coaster, get a grip, allow his contents to become yours, allow his grace to become your grace, allow the peace of God to guard your heart and your mind to bring you to a place of stability for somebody else, including yourself. Amen? Amen. 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 Isn't there an old Beatles song that she bought a ticket to ride? Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, I didn't buy a ticket to ride that. <laughs> no. I'd, rather drive, I'd rather ride the demon drop than that coaster. <laughs> I'm a hot mess. What do you mean, Tom? Back up nodding. <laughs> any questions? Any thoughts? Sarah ain't gonna share no thoughts with her coming down. Bonnie, any thoughts? None. None? <laughs> All right. Father, help us. Lord, we're emotional people. You gave us emotions. You gave us feelings. They're not wrong. But we can't be governed by them. We can't be governed by them. So, Lord, help us in these moments of anxiousness where our feelings want to drive us and they want to go, they want to, they want to govern our lives, Father, that we would say, no, 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 no. I'm coming to you. And we make our request that we come to you when we're anxious. Your peace guards our heart. Your peace guards our mind. Your grace enables us to get through. So, Lord, let us become people led and driven by the Spirit and not our flesh. In Jesus' name, amen.